des, 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 des légions. Stand to your feet for Pastor Pan as we come with the word of encouragement tonight. Hold up, Miss. So, um, so what's our uh, what's what's been our scripture for the week? Ephesians six, okay. Ephesians six. All right, and I need somebody uh, to uh, open up the Ephesians six and give me Ephesians six and ten. Uh, well, well, say say it like you mean it. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers. Just what I'm saying? Okay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There you go. There you go. I, you had the new, new, new rise version. All right. All right, so let's call it. So we, we talked about this a little bit on uh, was that Tuesday about being strong in the Lord, and and so what we're going to talk about tonight is we want to talk about identity, about who we are. And so somebody walked up to you and said, "Hey, who are you? What would you say?" Okay, that, that, hey, there you go. That's right. Okay, I'm Rosa. All right, anybody else? What would you say? What would you say? If somebody asked, "Who are you?" Okay, we got the child of God from the Holy Ghost. Got the child of God. Okay, anybody else? I would eat some of us. That's a good answer. It, it makes me laugh too when you say it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Anything I'm, about you? I'm me. I'm me. I'm me. Okay. So let me ask the next question because I'm Thomas and I'm Rosalind and I'm me. What, what, what does that mean? That's my name. Okay. That's it. Anything else about you I should know? No. Oh, yes, yes you are. That 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 works too. That works too. No. Huh? No. No what? There's nothing else that you should know about me. Okay. All right. I don't know, I don't know you, maybe. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So here here here's, the, here's my next question. What do you know about you? Because one of the issues that we have, especially in 2024, ah, I got it, 2024, at least, well, I'll say it this way, it was a problem in 2023, and I have a sinking feeling it did not go away on December 31st of 2023, but people have a problem with identity. Who am I? Who, who, who am I? Because one of the things that's interesting about that, when you say who you are, um, somebody said, I, I, I saw this somewhere the other day, is really depending on who you ask. Because how about if I ask, hey, who is he? So I'm saying, well, he's my Uncle Thomas. He's my husband. He, he, he's a member of this church. Everybody's got a little bit different opinion of who you are. Everybody you meet has a different idea. And one of the issues many of us have is we're trying to manage everybody's different opinion of our identity. Because that's when people who really don't know who they are, because I'm trying to be something to please Tuala. Oh, well, now I'm going to be something different to please Trinity. And I got to be something different. And we really don't know. Yes, my name is Thomas. Yes, my name is Rosa. Yes, I'm me. But who is that? What's the difference between reputation and character? Reputation is what people know you know about you. Okay. Character is who you are with nobody. Okay. All right. All right. 
So, and another way to say it, reputation is, is what people think about, what people think you are. And character is what people, what, what you are, really are. Okay? And so, let, let, let's ask a question. In general, what do you think? Are people more concerned with character or reputation? Reputation. And that's why we don't know who we are. That's why we don't know who we are, because we are worried about what everybody else says. We are, we, are on, we are in a culture right now that if I post something on Facebook and I don't get enough likes, it destroys my confidence. It destroys my identity because my whole, because I, I, it's pretty, I mean, Sonia, you and I talked about this earlier. I would argue what most people are seeking right now, we are all seeking a sense of significance. I want to be significant. I want to matter. I, I want somebody to, I want you to see me. And sometimes, all of us who are parents, anybody have a kid that acted out? I don't know, Everybody have a kid that acted out? And, and, and if you go, they talk about child psychology, what do they say? One of the number one reasons why a kid acts out. They can't get their way attention. That's what they can't get their way. They want attention. They want attention. Because being quiet, I ain't get no attention. So I got to throw something down. I got to punch my brother. I got to do something so someone will see me. And one of the biggest challenges for us between the ages of zero and 150 <laughs> is knowing who we are. And so when it comes to knowing who you are, so you said, Thomas, so, so I, you know, I say, yeah, I, I'm Robert Payne, I'm a member of the Payne family. And, I, 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 and for a while, I was a member of the United States Air Force, and I'm a member of, uh, of the United, uh, the, uh, wait, whatever, the African Methodist of Bill's Church. One of these churches, I don't know. <laughs> Be careful. Uh, I, 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 all of these things, but what, but there's a problem with all of those things that we could name, that we normally name. You know what it is? They change. Because uh, Thomas, how long were you in the military? Twenty-eight years. Twenty-eight years. So for twenty-eight years, people ask you, you know, who are you? I'm, I'm Sergeant Thomas Smith. Math sorry. Oh, my bad. 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 Hey, next time you said that to me, you better stand up and salute, though. Because <laughs> I was Lieutenant Colonel. All right. Robert Payne. Was. 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 <laughs> because one day, on June, on, on May 30th, uh, May 31st of 2015, I was Lieutenant Colonel Payne. The next day, I walked on base. I was Bob. <laughs> the same dude that called me sir and stood up when I walked in the room on Thursday, on Friday, looked at me and said, what you want? Who am I? Who am I? I, 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 I I'm a mother, but now my kids have moved out. I'm an employee, but now I've been fired or I retired. And too often we base our identity on things that change. So the challenge for us is if we want to understand our identity, who we are, we've got to base it on something that does not change. <clears throat> hmm, what doesn't change? Hmm, that's a good one. God doesn't change. Okay, anything else? Right, wrong, wait. Right, wrong doesn't change because it's based on what? The Word of God, which does not change. And so, what we're going to talk about the rest of this evening is we talk about identity. We're going to talk about identity based off of what doesn't change. Because if we are trying to find ourselves in everything else, I mean, for those, you know, uh, well, every, every, every young person in here has changed grades. So in one grade, you were something, you sat in a certain class, a certain seat, you, you, you knew kind of where you fit. And then you switched grades. And now I don't know where I fit. We changed jobs. In my life, I've moved 16 times. I've had to theoretically reinvent myself 
16 times. And that's not counting the jobs, Lewis, that I changed while I was in the place. Because one place I was in for five years and I changed jobs six times. So every time I had to reinvent myself. So the question becomes, who am I? Because if I base myself on things that change, I'm never going to understand me. Okay? So let's go. So, so well, let me get back to uh, the reading of the scripture. So, and the reason why I wanted uh, Sister uh, Sonia, thank you for quoting uh, Ephesians 6 10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you want to understand your identity, you need to find your identity in, in the Lord. Not in the church. Not, not, in, not even in your family, because some of us have families that don't, we're not very significant. And so if we're going to find our identity and find out who we are, we've got to do that based on who God is. And I'm going to make an argument tonight that who God is, and we're going, to, we're going to specifically look at some of the things about Jesus, about who Jesus is defines who we are. Okay? Now, at least that's who we should be. Let me say it that way. Because if you are not attached to Jesus, no wonder you got that. So there's two issues. One, we got people who are attached to Jesus who don't know who they are, and that's a problem. And then we've got some who just aren't attached to Jesus at all, which is another problem. How many of you saw the movie Lion King? Lion King, one of the greatest movies, one of the greatest movies ever. I, I've only seen it like 427 times, but my daughter has watched it 426 times. And, and, and she can quote the whole thing. But there, you talk about a movie that'll preach. Lion King will preach. How many of you remember the scene? Uh, there, there's a scene where um, Simba has run away. And he's standing there looking at the water, and he just, he's just he's confused. And all of a sudden, the, the clouds form. And Simba's in, I mean, uh, Mufasa is in the clouds. And, 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 and Mufasa, and Simba's like, oh my gosh, there you are! And anybody remember what Mufasa said from the clouds? He said, you've forgotten me. And Simba goes, no, I couldn't forget you. you you're my father. I love you. And, and Mufasa gave one of the greatest lines ever. He says, because you don't know who you are, you've forgotten me. Because Simba's identity was supposed to be tied to his father. Guess who your identity is supposed to be tied to? Your father. To your father. To your heavenly father. Now, of course, that, that, that becomes a problem because when I say your father, some of us are for worship, but our father wasn't so good. No, 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 no. That's why I'm saying that, that, that's not the identity you're tied to. You, you can't remember, you, you did not come from your father. Okay, well, you, you, both, so you did not come from your parents. You came through your parents. You came from God. You came from God. That's why your value is not based on who you came through. Is who you came from. So everybody knows the commercials. He went to Jared's. The jewelry, the, he went to Jared's. The, the jewelry commercial. The jewelry store. You heard that? Yeah. Oh, I don't have Jared's right here. Oh, yeah. Jared's. Yeah, it, it, it's a it, it, it's a very fancy jewelry store. I think I shared the story once that you know he went to Jared's and the one always got a bag and he and, and one year I went to Jared's because I wanted to buy my wife something and Jared wasn't interested in selling nothing. So I asked Mister Jared for a bag. I said, Mr. Jerry, can I have a bag? And Jerry gave me a bag. I went to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought some for my wife and I put it in the Jerry's bag. Because all the commercial said is he went to Jerry's. <laughs> and didn't say he bought anything <laughs> from Jerry's. And so, but here's the question. If I take a, 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 a necklace from Jerry's, five carat, just 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 blinged out. And I take that to Walmart and I sell it in Walmart. Is it worth any less? No. Because it was, it's not based on what it came through. It's based on where it's from. You're not from Cedar Grove. You're not from Stoner Hill. You're not from Shreveport. You're not from the United States of America. You are from God. Because if I say you're from any of these other places, then that becomes the top level of where you can go. 
And that's why we've got people. I remember I was a recruiter when I first uh, joined the Air Force. And I would go to all these high schools. And I would talk to these young men and young women who, I mean, brilliant young people. And I said, look, I'm going to get you a scholarship. Go to any college you want in the country. No, I'm going to work in the factory. Wait, 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 no. You got 4.0 GPA. You, 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 you've got skills. You've got talent. You've got ability. Yeah, but you know, my grandfather built the factory. And my father and all my uncles work in the factory. And my older brothers work in the factory. Therefore, I'm going to work in the factory. Because they set the upper limit of what you could be. Who set your upper limit? Who, who, who set your upper limit to say, that's all an African-American female in Shreveport, you can get about this high? Now you know it is 2024. Who set that limit? Who set the limit of how high you can go as a person of your age? You know, people of my age only do. Who set that limit? Most likely it was some other people that you've allowed, but you didn't come from them. You came from God. And somebody tell me, is God limited or limitless? So if God is limitless, that would make you limitless. And, and, and so we've got to change what, what, what is Romans 12 one tell us? We've got to uh, we've got to be changed by the what the renewing of we gotta change it when we think. Because I'm not going to lie, we've thought wrong for a long time. We, we've thought wrong. That's what the Bible talks so much about. As a man thinks, so is he. And if we don't change this, nothing else matters. And so tonight I want to try to help us change this. So I want you to go to, if those of you who have a Bible, I want you to go to John chapter 10. Because we're going to be strong in the Lord, but we've got to figure out who the Lord is. And I want you to go to John chapter 10. Anybody who's got, well, most of you got, got a tablet or something. And, and not, not John 10, I want you to go to chapter John, but I want you to go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And I need somebody for me, loud and proud, to read John chapter 6, verse 35. John chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, but whoever believes in me shall never thirst. All right, who, who's talking? Oh, Jesus said. Oh, no, that's, oh, you didn't hear that. I mean, yeah, yeah. But that, that, that's fine. I just need to make sure we understand. So, one of the things about John, John is, is, is one of the great books of the Bible. If you don't know anything about Christianity, if you don't know anything about God, if you don't know anything about Jesus, read the Gospel of John. Gospel of John is focused on seven miracles that Jesus did. All the way from um, the uh, changing of water to wine to his resurrection. But it's also based on seven statements that Jesus makes about I am. And because if once we know who he is, we will have a better understanding of who we are. Because we came from him. John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was with God. And nothing was created that was created. Without him, nothing was created. So everything that was made, anybody here was made? You talking about a made man? I'm not a made man, I got a lot of money in the bank. I'm a made man because God made me. Because guess what? Money in the bank goes away. Matter of fact, I had somebody, who was it? Somebody I know. Um, Went to their bank last week, and their bank account that had five thousand dollars in it had about one hundred and fifty. Because mm. got somebody got a hold of their card, yeah. Neiman Marcus. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they shopped well. <laughs> they shopped well. So if you were placing your identity in your money, you gonna have a problem. But if you place your identity in God. You will always know who you are. So in John 6 35, what does Jesus say? I am what? I am the bread of life. So big so so what what's what, what's this, what's symbolic about bread? What, so what, what? What about bread? Okay. You have to have it. So it is a staple of life. 
It is a staple. So a staple of life means it is something you have to have. The world will tell you you don't need Jesus. You need whatever else. Uh, you, you, alcohol will be good for you. Um, sex will be good for you. Pleasure will be good for you. All of these other things the, the world will tell you you need. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And so why does that mean? So somebody called uh, Bible scholars. I got about a thousand years of Bible scholar here. So what? What does that mean? He's the bread of life. What's that got to do with me? Well, that sounds good and holy, but what does that mean? Hmm? What does it mean? That's what the rest of the So for many of you, um, when you talk, talk about understanding the Bible, I'm telling you the best commentary on the Bible is what? The Bible. Because it says, I'm right. It's on the screen, right? It's on the screen? On the screen. I'm right. What was it? He or she that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believes in me shall never thirst. When we are in Christ, our needs will be met. In Christ, we are sustained. In Christ, we are satisfied. Well, I, I, I need a Porsche. Do you need a Porsche? Can you afford the insurance on a Porsche? You don't need a Porsche. You need transportation. That's what you need. So we've got to stop being so, because too many, too often, we want our wants, and then we, what, like somebody said, we pay for our wants and we beg for our needs. I, 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 got, I, I got a uh, iPhone 27, but my light's off. So I got to get a pay pastor, can I, uh, can I plug in? Can I, can I plug in? My phone always off. Why? Because I ain't paying my light bill. And between phone and light bill, which one do I really need? I need lights. But I put my money on the phone. I got the red bottoms, but I ain't got no gas in my car. I look good, though. You look good. I look good. I look good. Why are you walking? Why are you walking? That's good, because everybody knows you got a red bottom, because you're walking everywhere. Yeah, I look a red bottom. We ain't red no more, because I've been... Walking everywhere. But that, 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 that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. And, and so we've got to understand that Christ promises. Somebody give me um, Philippians 4.19. Nope. That's 4.13. 4.19. Yeah, we need to know this one. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs. From his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Oh wait, so so wait, so this God will do what? Take care of Oh, supply how many? All um, what but all your needs according to what? His riches in Christ Jesus. And so this relationship with Christ means we are supposed to be in Christ. So if we are in Christ, guess what we have? Everything we need. We run around here for all that stuff. Why? Because we want to be significant and we don't have everything we need. But Jesus promises that in relationship with him, we will have everything we need. Uh, the Rolling Stones have a song that was the Rolling Stones, but then I can't get no satisfaction. They, they, they were on the road. They, they were on concerts. They were doing all this. They were making all this money, but they could not get Satisfaction, because you can't have satisfaction apart from God. One writer said that we have a God-shaped hole in our lives. And anybody watch a watch a baby give a baby the little thing with all the shapes? You know, you get a little circle. You, put, you know, and you watch it because some of us have really smart kids who would take a little circle <laughs> and go to the square, <laughs> and we gonna make this. <laughs> Thing fit. And you're like, no, no, baby, over here. <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing at the baby because many of us are doing that in life. Mm, yeah. We got a God shaped hole in our lives. Mm. Money, 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 mm. money. But the song says, the more money I got, more problems, more problems I see. That's 
But I don't care about that because it's not going to work that way for me, Morgan. I'm going to make this money fit to make me. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Sex, 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 sex. That's going to make me happy. Woo! Until it doesn't. Especially in Shreveport, because they get down to the clinic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. The Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season, but like everything else, seasons end, seasons change, and then it's not fun anymore. But I'm gonna try to make it fun. I'm gonna drink. I'm gonna get high. I'm gonna do all this. And what's the problem with getting high? The biggest problem with getting high is that first time, it's good. It's good. And then the next time, chasing it. And then I did it again. And alcohol and drugs have the same impact because I'm continuing to chase to put something to satisfy me, and it never satisfies. I know the commercial says Snickers satisfies, but I'm still hungry. <laughs> but Jesus promises, I will satisfy. Okay? And so in Christ, we can be satisfied. Now, I will tell you this. Um, I got this on my desk at home at work so that I can remember it. A satisfied life looks more to give than it does to get. If you were always walking around going, I gotta have, 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 you're not satisfied. Now, does that mean I have? Does that mean I I don't want anything more in my life? I don't want to get promoted. I don't want to move. No, that's not what that means. But that also means that I've got it in the right place. That my whole life is not about getting, 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 getting. I gotta get, I gotta get, I gotta get. Why do I gotta get? Because I want to be significant. And I'm not. Getting there, and so if we if that none of that's working, maybe we should try Jesus because He promises to satisfy. Let's go to John chapter eight. John chapter eight, verse twelve. John eight, verse twelve. When somebody finds it, you can read it for me. Jesus spoke to them again. I'm the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. All right. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. All right. When you are walk, when you are in the dark, but no, so when you go home tonight, if you didn't leave the light on, what's the first thing you're going to do? Why? Why don't you just walk around in the dark? Or you would sleep. Huh? You can't see. You can't see. You have no idea what's going on around you because you don't have any light. And many of us in our lives, we are walking in darkness. Any, any of you, uh, any of you ever you get up in the middle of the night? I want a drink of water. I want some, but you're too lazy to turn on the light. Anybody? Any, what, what happens? Stop that toe. Stop that toe. Walk into a wall, walk into something. You know everything. I know this. I know this house at the back of my hand. Oh, wait, where did that come from? Because mm. I'm walking the walls, I'm walking the doors, I'm kicking things that I didn't know were there because I had forgotten. Because, and some of us are living life that way. We're walking through darkness because we're too lazy to turn the light on. Because what does light do? Light reveals the truth. Light reveals what's really going on around you. Any of you ever got dressed in the dark? Yeah, yeah. How that work? I know. I know. I got dressed in the dark one day. Came out with two different shoes on. But I was, I was in a hurry. I have time to do all this until I got out and realized I had a black shoe on and a brown shoe on, and then I felt dumb because I refused to turn on the light. Now, there's another issue about light, though, because um, Jesus says in 8, John 8, 12, um, I am the light of the world. And I know somebody knows this one by heart. Matthew 5, 14. Anybody know Matthew 5, 14? Y'all know this. Come on. Y'all got a better pass than me. <laughs> Y'all got a better pass than me. Somebody give me Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. Oh! You can stop right there. In John 8, 12, he says... 
But he said, I am the light of the world. And in Matthew 5, 14, he says, You are the light of the world. The of the world. So anybody know, so somebody tell me, science, scientists, scientists, more than usually scientists. The moon. <laughs> the moon. Does it have light of its own? It must, because every time I walk out, no? No, it doesn't. Well, how come I can see it? That will preach all by itself. The sun shines on the moon so that the moon can shine on the world at night. The S U N signs on the moon so it could shine on the earth. So if the S O N will sign on the M A N or the W O M A N, then they can shine on the earth. See, everybody's trying to be impactful. Everybody wants to make a difference. Just let Jesus shine on you, and you will make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to be significant? Just be what you are. You are significant if you are in Christ. I don't need to do tricks. I don't need to do backflips. I don't need to do magic tricks. I am significant when Jesus shines on me and I allow that to flow through me. You are the light. You are. Now you might be. Now you could be. You are the light of the world. The world is dark. And that's good for your lamp. Because if it never got dark. I lived in, uh, I lived in North Carolina. Anybody live in Alaska? Anybody here? Anybody live in Alaska? So say, if you, if, you, if you live in Alaska, somebody could. I knew some North I know a lot of people live in Alaska. A lot of people live in Alaska. And one thing about Alaska, when you get to the, the, the summertime, you have about 23 hours of sunlight. So the sun doesn't go down. But when I was in North Dakota, we didn't have 23, we had about six. It, the sun would come up about four o'clock in the morning and it would go down about 11. We, we ought to wait almost to midnight to watch fireworks on 4th of July. But guess what I did not need from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m.? Light. <laughs> but come December, the sun wouldn't come up until about 8.30. <laughs> And it would go down about 3.30. It got darker, but it was okay. Why? Because I had light. Will anybody agree with me that the world is getting darker? Yeah. The world is getting darker. And people are oh my gosh, it's dark. It's dark. Oh my gosh. How come you don't do that when you go home? Because when you go home, you don't go, oh my gosh, it's dark. And it's dark. No, what do you do? You turn on the light. You're going to know it's dark. It's dark. And God's going, <laughs> Turn on the light. It's dark in the school. Turn on. It's dark in this job. It's dark in this house. You are the light of the world. And how do you turn on the light? Just be who you are. In Christ. God made you special. You are unique. God formed you from the He made you like you. Nobody can be you better than you can be you. And when you try to be somebody else, the light goes out. Because you are hiding your light under a bushel. That's what, that's what the rest of Matthew 5 says. Because we're trying to be somebody else. Be like Mike. Forget Mike. You know who Mike was going to be like? Mike. Mike. You don't need to be the next anybody. You be the first you. Amen. If you are the first you, the world will change. Because God, you know, to your parents, you might have been an accident. Huh. Oops. We didn't mean for that to happen. To your parents, but remember, you didn't come from your parents. You came through your parents. God used your parents to produce you. So you might have been a mistake by them. Actually, let's, let's clear it up. The baby's not the mistake. The sin is the mistake. The baby is the purpose of God. And so since you were a purpose of God, God had a plan for you to make the world better. Because that's what light does. So if Jesus is the light of the world, guess what? You are a difference maker. Because light makes a difference.
Okay? All right, John 10, 10. Oh, no, John 10, 7 first. John 10, 7 first. Therefore, if you sin in, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. What would gates do? Open. Open and close. That's good. But so what? Keep in, keep out. Keep things in, keep things out. And so in this case, so what he's talking about here is actually somebody go ahead and read John 10:10 10, 10, to do everybody out. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. I have come that they may have life. And read 11. And Sorry. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. All right. So he's the gate. He's the shepherd. Here's the picture you have. Uh, in, in those days, the shepherd would build kind of a kind of a pen. With uh, open on one end, and uh, we have uh, walls all around. We put the sheep in there, and then the shepherd would sleep at the door, so that when nothing got into the sheep, unless it went through yeah. the shepherd. So guess what? If he's the gate, that means we are protected. Yeah. I don't care what happens to you. You need to know it only happened because he allowed it. And if he allowed it, that means you can handle it. Right. He probably let, the shepherd might let a butterfly in. Might even let a bee in. Because guess what? With the wool of the fur, I mean, the, the wool on the sheep, they can handle a bee. A bee's not an issue. It might sting. It might sting a little bit, but you can handle it. But the wolf, oh. I'm not letting him in. See, we worry about what God let in. We ought to celebrate what he didn't. Amen. Alice, how many accidents you been in? Ooh, I can't tell you. Exactly. Me <laughs> Trust me, but your insurance is going to be counting. So <laughs> they count. And it's so, like, God let me get an accident. But God let me live every time. Amen. I ain't go to jail for one of them. Uh -oh. I ain't go to jail for any No, I said I didn't go to jail for any of them. So I'm going to say it right. I didn't go to jail for any of them. I had a couple. Never mind. You don't even know all that. That's a little bit too much about business. <laughs> but the fact is, everything that's happened to you, you gotta understand, it's been sifted through the hands of God. I preached a sermon when I first got here. Um, when God throws you under the bus. I remember that was Job. Because Satan came up and said, hey man, I'm just out walking around. And, and God said, oh man, you see the needle? Whoa! Just like Will Smith said to Chris Rock, keep my name <laughs> out your mouth. I'm paraphrasing it because sometimes when God says, no, no, God, no, 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 I'm good over here. I'm just keeping quiet. I'm doing my thing. You up there telling Satan, now check her out. And as a matter of fact, go ahead. What you do? Why would God do that? Why would God let Satan? Destroy his family. Destroy his business. Why would God do that? Because God knew he didn't handle it. And I know that sounds good when we talk about Job. <laughs> but when we talk about us, it don't sound so good. But you need to know you're protected. Because what we do, we always know, we know the first part of Job. But did anybody know what happened at the end of Job? At the end of Job, he got back, mm -mm, not just everything, double. He got back double. Now, I do not know what that means for some of our situations. But I know what his promise is. And the question is, do I trust him? I'm protected. That's why we can stand up and shout, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It's going to form, but it's got to go through him. Because he is the gate. And he is the good shepherd. So the good shepherd lays down his life for sheep. Why does the good shepherd lay down his life for sheep? Because the good shepherd cares. You gotta know you're loved. I don't care if anybody else around here likes you. God loves you. Because other people want you to like them, like you for what you do for them. How about this one? I mean, none of you ladies have ever heard this. Baby, you love me. Because I love you. And if you love me, because, because what? Because we want a relationship. And what if, well, what if I don't? Everybody else is. And if I don't, I'm going to lose him. 
Because guess what? I think there might be some ladies in here that can testify. If you do it, you can still lose him. And have it written on and then have it written on you know on Facebook. No man. No. They they giving it up. I had to think of something. You know, hey, 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 trust me. This is a hard job. This is a hard job because one day I did that. One day, I mean, one day I did that, and I said somebody's name, and right after I said it, she was there. And I was like, "Oh, never mind. I'm sorry, my man." But you gotta understand. And because why? Because I want relationship. I want somebody to love me. And most, uh, what well, somebody said that uh, men will give love to get sex, and women will get sex, give sex mm. to get love. Mm. And we're using it for all the wrong reasons. And we need to understand because why? Because I'm looking for that relationship. I'm looking to be valuable to somebody. And guess what? You are valuable to God. And since you're valuable to God, you don't need somebody else to try to tell you you need something. Girl, you're beautiful. You don't need some bow legged, no nothing, no job having brother. Oh, you see how beautiful. No, you just say, yes, I am. Yeah. What else you got? Yeah. I've heard that before. My pastor told me that. Yeah. You need something else. Yeah. I'll tell every woman I know, unless the brother got a job, a home, and a relationship with God, he ain't ready for you. Because before Adam gave God Eve, Adam was in a part, Adam before, and Eve did just show up on day one. When God said, okay, I'm, well, hold on, but you ain't ready yet. Tend the garden. He had a job. Placed him in the garden. He had a home. Me and you go walk in the garden. Okay, you got that? Now, go to sleep. I'll bring Eve to you. When the brother come to you, pull out the checklist. You got a home? Well, you had to live with my mom. Okay, thank you very much. Next! <laughs> well, you got a home? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just got an apartment. Okay, okay, good. You got a job? Well, you know, I'm in between. Well, you in between girlfriends right now. <laughs> Next! Well, you got a home? Oh, you got a job? Oh, okay, we get home. Where do you work? Let me, what's your schedule? I need to come see you because brothers lie. <laughs> you know, I work over there. Say okay, that, say that. Uh, cool, what time? Because I, I want to see you there. I, I trust but verify. <laughs> I trust but verify. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. well, I'm just I'm off for the next three weeks. Ain't nobody off <laughs> for those three weeks. Actually, somebody is off. They unemployed. <laughs> okay, oh, oh, you got a home. Good. You got a job. Well, I'm spiritual. What's wrong then? Because every spirit ain't holy. Come on. Yeah. 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 Every spirit ain't holy. Come on. You know what they call the stuff in the Bible? Yeah. They call them spirits. Oh, so some of the brothers around here who are spiritual, they spiritual all right. Yes, they they go and farm spiritual. <laughs> they trying to go to red spiritual. Hennessy. Yeah, Hennessy yeah, spiritual. Yeah, yeah. The church of Hennessy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't like that. You don't need that. God's got better for you. And because he loves you, he's going to make sure if you wait on him. And brothers, just a little bit, I don't want to speak on this. Brothers, if she's throwing it at you, run! Run! I, it's like a pitcher in baseball. They don't care who the catcher is. <laughs> They're just looking for someone mm. to throw the ball to. Mm. And if she's throwing, oh, yeah, that's my lady. That's my lady right there. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the JoJo over there. <laughs> He's saying the same thing. <laughs> Both of y'all posting the same thing about the same woman. Oh, what? <laughs> what? We got to be careful. Because we're looking for significance. But if we find significance in God, I don't need that. I don't need that. Thank you very much for your offer. I appreciate you saying what you said. 
Talk to you later. I've got things to do. Because I've got to be about my father's business. Okay? All right. All right. John 11, 25. We got two more. We wait up. Well, we got a couple more. I'm gonna try to do real quick because because Keisha's looking at me. Right? <laughs> John eleven twenty five. Jesus said to her, "I am the resurrection. I am the life. Everyone who believes in me will have life, even if they die." What what what's what's resurrection? What's a resurrection? Come back from the dead. Any of you got some dead situation? Mm. <laughs> and you got some dead, some dead relationships, some, some dead financial things. Guess what? Jesus says, I am the resurrection. So because he is the resurrection, that means we are overcomers. You need to know that it's bad. It, it, I'm not saying it's not bad. But I'm, not, but I'm also saying you can overcome it. Because Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Because we remember the story. In the story, she was looking for a healing. She just wanted healing. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. So when it gets really, 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 really bad, it's over. It's never going to make it. We got to get it over. And God's like, don't worry. Just wait. I told y'all before, one of my dad's favorite TV shows is Walker, Texas Ranger. Loves a Walker, Texas Ranger. And one thing, if you've ever watched Walker, Texas Ranger, you know one thing guaranteed in every episode. At about the 30 minute point, Walker's gonna be hanging from a cliff. There's gonna be a bomb in the car and a snake crawling up the cliff. And the bomb will be at about three seconds and they'll cut to commercial. But what do you know? He's gonna survive, why? Because it's been written in the story. <laughs> Guess what? It's been written in your story. Amen. The comeback that never, that no one thought would happen, it was written. And everybody in this story, well, Cooper can tell you about a resurrection story. Some of our marriages can tell you about a resurrection story. Some of our financial situations can tell. Will, 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 I got Will, Will all over the place telling you about <laughs> resurrection stories. When we thought life was over, yeah. and it came back, not because we won the lottery, not because we became world famous, we invented something big. It's because God said it ain't over. Yeah. Because he is the resurrection yeah. and the life. And because he is the resurrection and the life, it ain't what's the song? It ain't over. We were saying that. What we that? Somebody else said that the other day. It's uh, Teddy Jam. Teddy's Jam. It's uh, not over. The party's not over. The party's not over. It ain't over. Did you wake up this morning? Yeah. It ain't over. If you're still breathing, it's not over. Actually, let me make it better. If God is still breathing, it's not over. And if we hold on that, we know we are overcomers. Therefore, we have Oh, He obviously plans extra. All right? Let's go to John. Uh, let's see. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Anyone? Jesus is telling them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay. All right. Again, gate access. Yeah. See, the first time the gate was about keeping stuff out. Yeah. This is about allowing stuff yeah. in. Yeah. In. You got to know that you are in with God. <laughs> God. When, 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 in, in, in Jesus' baptism, God looked down and said, This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. God is looking at you. You need, somebody needs to believe that God is smiling when he looks at you. Too many people, see, people have frowned at us for so long, we think God is frowning too. God looking down looking at you. That's not God. Yeah. That's not God because when we are in Christ. He sees us through Jesus' colored glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have access. He is the way, the truth, and the life. I, I, I am not going to be kept out because I have access. Everybody trying to get a hookup. Some of us remember when we were when we were younger and doing some different things. We was trying to get the hookup into the club. Yep. Trying to figure who do I know? Mm -hmm. Hey man, you know what? We can go over this club over here. I'm gonna do to the door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, everybody like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Guess what? We know the dude at the door. Come on. And it's a better door than a couple of Uh-huh. It's a better door. It's a better door than some of the other places we've been to. Yeah. And we've got access. That means we belong. One of the things many of us are trying to do, we want to belong. I want to belong somewhere. I want to belong with somebody. You belong with God. Amen. What better? You want to be in a clinic? Be in a Be in a clinic with the Almighty God. Not because you're so good. That's why he says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. If I hang with him, I'm in. I belong. You, know, you, you don't belong here. You don't get to say it. I try to kick my brother out of the house more times than I know. Because I was, I was the oldest. I had been there for six years. And he gonna come here touching stuff. You got to go. But he never went. Why not? Because it wasn't my house. <laughs> it wasn't my house. I couldn't kick him out anywhere. So someone explain to me why people keep coming in here and when you look at the money, they leave. But they didn't want me here. It ain't the house. God wants you here because you belong. Because Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. And when we are in him, we belong. Okay, all right, so let's go, uh, last one, John 15, 1. John 15, 1. Mm -hmm. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Who are you? He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Three and three. <laughs> oh. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And four. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Amen. You are empowered to produce. You have something in you that God wants to have in the world. But to get it out, you've got to stay connected to Him. I've said this before. If I cut off my finger, is it still a finger? Yes. Yes. But it ain't no good to anybody. It's no good by itself. If I come up here, and I, let me see. Let me see. Oh, don't worry. It's still a plant. It's still a leaf. It's green. It's still a leaf. Look at it. It's all green and it's pretty. You should have got a yellow. It's dying. No. You should have got a yellow. No, it's not dying. It's green. It's pretty. Why? Because it's no longer connected. All of the people who say, I don't need to be with God's people. I can be a Christian. I don't need to go to church. Everybody who says that, I need you to hand them a leaf from a tree and just tell them to hold on to it. It'll be green for a while. But eventually, it's going to dry up. If this was a banana leaf, or if it was a branch from a banana tree, or an orange tree, how many oranges would you expect to come off of this? No. But no, it's a, but it's a branch from an orange tree. No, I didn't look at it. You know, it's a couple more days from the dead. Hmm. So, when I'm good at it, because, because, you did read the part that says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Now I'm doing plenty. Are you? Are you? Are, are, are you doing everything that you could be doing? Because that branch, look, I mean, it says green. Everybody, and I, I, you know, I can be impressed. Y'all was like, oh my gosh. You, you tore the tree. Why didn't you take a yellow one? Oh my gosh. How come we care more about 
the trees that are disconnected in the people. Ooh. 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 We have family members that are disconnected. Yeah. 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 And we ain't said nothing mm. to them. We, we got people we claim to love. And they are just a disconnect. And they I'm good. I'm good. You died. You're not producing what you could produce. And so I need you one. You need to know you're productive. You were built to produce. And I'm not just talking babies. I'm talking making a difference. Well, I don't have what they have. Well, you know, an apple tree doesn't have what an orange tree has. Does it need to have what an orange tree has to produce what it was made to produce? No! It just produces what it was made to produce. Do you have to wait a particular amount of time? You have to be a particular age? Is, is there a retirement age for production? No! As long as you are connected to him, you can produce. And, and, and so, so with all of that, and, and there's a whole lot of other things when people come in, you know, they got shirts. As a matter of fact, I actually had a, I got a shirt that I was supposed to wear tonight and didn't change into it. It just says, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But, you know, the bottom line is, what does that mean? I mean, I'm breathing, I'm blessed, but I can be more than that. <laughs> and I need to recognize that I'm more than that because of who I'm connected to. And when I'm connected to him, I'm empowered to produce. When I'm connected to him, I'm protected. When I'm protected to him, I have access. I belong. I would argue everything that you claim you want for out there is present in here without regret. Because I can belong to some people, but I'm going to have to do some things that I might not want to do. And I'm trying to tell you, and I, am I, is anybody make sure? Have I said anything about your life being easy, uh, being perfect? You'll never have any problems, you'll never have any issues? Okay, good. Because somebody walked away. Well, the pastor told me if I was in Christ, I wouldn't have no problem. Mm -hmm. So the pastor said that. Because I didn't say that. Because Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. So whether you are in Christ or not, you're going to have trouble. But here it is. Be of good cheer because... I have overcome the world because I am the resurrection and the life. So you're going to have trouble, but guess what? He's great enough to help you Amen. get through it. Amen. And so I want you to know when you leave here and all the stuff that I've said, I've said a whole lot of stuff, you are God's gift. He, 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 you're not something he went to the dollar store and picked up at the last minute. You were a gift he planned. You were a gift that he decided, I'm going to make that. And other people look at that and go, Ugh. but he looks at it and goes, masterpiece. <laughs> How many Mona Lisas did uh, Michelangelo paint? <laughs> That's why it's a masterpiece. How many of you did God make? So if he made you a masterpiece, why are you spending so much time trying to look like it and act like it? How much sense does it make for the Mona Lisa to be looking over at Whistler's mother and going, I want to look like that. I want to look like that. Why do you make me look like that? Because you look like you do. You were built like you do because God's got something special for you to do. But if you have any questions, I don't, know, I don't know who I am. I don't know who I am. Remember who Jesus is. Because if you remember who Jesus is, you will know who you are. Amen. Amen. Any questions, comments? I'm sorry, Keisha. I see you burning the side of my head. I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry, but you know. I'm saying it to be nice. All right. Anybody else? All right. Trishon, Irwin. Let's give it up for Pastor B. All right, we've got tickets out. If you came in after Pastor B, please come get that ticket. Let's raise our hand. We will have people come get that ticket. Miss Lady Danita.
right, ladies, all right. Oh, wait, what is going on? All right.
Please use it to nourish and strengthen our bodies. And also, God, use this time of fellowship to strengthen us as your children as we go forth to be the people you made us to be. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Get so, up. Speak to someone you didn't come with. Yeah, please exit to the left and you can have a seat at the banquet. Like the young said, to the left, to the left. To the left? Oh, that's my right. Yeah, left. Thank you all for coming out this week. We enjoyed you. What did we get, sir, Rashawn? Okay, all right. What do you mean? You don't know what to do. What are you doing? Oh, you don't need that. You don't need to shut it off.